Thank you, Maro, and thank you everyone for being with us today. I hope I'm going to utilize 10 to 12 minutes of your time, uh, taking you through an argument and a thought that I've had, and would love to hear your questions uh, after that. So to start with, uh, my name is Khalif al -Gama, and I'm part of the Dubai Future Foundation, and I head the Dubai Future Labs. And in the labs, we focus on robotics and AI and see how it could be of benefit to us uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. And one of the questions that I've always been asked when I come in uh, or, or people come into the lab, they ask, you know, what are robots going to do to us? Uh, is it going to be taking our jobs? Is it going to hurt us? And, and that really intrigued me to at least build this presentation and really take you through it. So I would warn you from the beginning, uh, the answer is not black and white. It is not a yes and no. Uh, and, and, and we'll have that debate hopefully at the end. So to do this really well, we have to ensure that we define things. So when we say robots, what do we really mean? And at, at its core, robots are just autonomous machines. They are really machines that are capable of understanding their environments and then carrying out certain actions in the real world. So that's simply a robot. So we can really say a robot is a, an advanced machine, but a machine nonetheless. And technology overall is really a sum of many, many techniques and skills that we humans have learned to produce a good. So we use technology to pre produce a good. In this, in this state, it is a machine. And really machines, no matter what we think of a machine to be, is, is a tool at the end of the day that we humans have utilized throughout history for our gains. So robots, really simply put, our tool uh, is a tool for our benefit, right? So since we agree to this, let's really look at some tools that we have benefited from throughout history. So you have the telephone in its current form, very advanced, and its old form, very simple, and it did one thing. This tool helped us communicate, either in voice or right now in data. When it comes to flying things, which we call planes, they again were a tool to move our goods around, and then you know we got to a stage where we moved ourselves around them, and it's getting more and more convenient and faster and faster. And at the end, tool again is something that our ancient human ancestors used to either defend themselves or hunt for their prey. So really, the tool itself that is in front of us right now is impartial. You cannot say about a phone if it's good or bad. It's just a phone. So if we agree to this basic fact, I'd like to introduce a, a way and a, a thought experiment. Um, I hope the majority of you at least know what the Western-centric example is, which is Terminator. And in the Eastern-centric, it was Sanchero, if I'm not wrong. And both of them were ideas that societies in the West or societies in the East um, introduced to, uh, you know, um, us. Uh, and both of them happened around 1983, 1984, some, somewhere around that, like a year in between. But what can you see? You immediately see it is the same tool. It is the same thing, which is a robot. But some cultures or some type of thinking decided that these tools are a bit dangerous. And they portrayed them uh, to us in that manner. And, and other societies said, no, they're friendly and they're our friends and we're going to have fun with them. But it's really interesting here to see that it's the way we perceive a tool uh, that leads it to a certain end. Uh, and, and really culture uh, influences that quite heavily. So let's, let's take this and simplify it even further and, and use a tool that we all are used to, which is a knife. If I chose a specific purpose to it when I was designing it, it would be a beautiful thing that I put on the shelf, which is like a samurai sword. If I wanted really to uh, save myself in the woods and I wanted to make the same tool, but with that end in mind, which is saving myself in a survival mode or going to war, 
I'd use the uh, knife on, on the left. And the same thing could be as harmless as a butter knife. What really decided on which one is which? Uh, it is us humans putting a purpose on the tool itself. So this is really important. We humans decide how this technology is going to look like and if it is really going to be of use for good or bad. Now, it is important before I move uh, in this topic that you know sometimes when we talk about robots, we think it's something that's going to come in the future. Uh, you know, we have to deal with it then, uh, and we have some 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 thoughts towards that. And I, I'd like to really argue today that robots and technology are here now, and it is important for us now to decide what is the ethical framework that we hold. Are we more like this you know, Western-centric type of thinking when it comes to technology? Are we more towards the Eastern-centric way of looking at technology? And, and this is, uh, what is our way? Are we one of each or are we something different? We need to decide because that hasn't happened until now, at least to what I see. Somebody needs to ethically decide or put a framework that we all could utilize on what do we stand for when it comes to developing technology. So as I said, technology has already started. It's out there already now. It's not gonna happen in five years to 10 years. It is happening right now. Robots are being used to build houses and they're also being used for very intricate surgeries. Planes are there previously to carry people. Now there are planes which we call drones to carry sometimes supplies and to also drop weapons. So again, we are putting our purpose on technology, on robots right now. It's not something that will come. Now, we've talked about one side of good and bad, which is when we come to make technology or when we come to make tools and when we come to make robots, we have an ethical implication to think consciously about what are we trying to develop and in which direction is it moving. But there is another side of it, which is what technology gives us and how we utilize it. So somebody has done the technology, it is done, but we're now starting to benefit out of that technology. That means we are getting the convenience out of that technology, right? And there is a price to that convenience. And there is an ethical implication on that side too. So what we see right now in front of us is a, a basic infographic of an um, Amazon Echo. I'm sure you're aware of them or aware of something similar to them. It's these small buttons that we put around us and we talk to them and sometimes they answer us back and sometimes they order things for us or you know, change the, the environment around us. What you see on your left is everything it takes to make this Echo happen, right? From the minerals it's needed, to the mine, to the smeltering, to the manufacturing and distribution, all the way to the internet that it actually needs to utilize and the algorithms and the data centers and the energy it is going to consume. And then when it ends its life, going towards the recycling. This is a huge, huge feat of marvel and engineering that we humans have mastered, making things that give us convenience. But I'd like us today to think a little bit about the ethics of that convenience. So, you know, we got a, a car and we got this uh, Echo and we got this phone and what do they give us? We, they give us time back. So instead of something, you know, needing a, an hour, two, three to get done, now you can get it done in 15 minutes. But it comes at a price. What did you do with that free time? Number one. And number two, was it worth everything that we have done to the environment that is around us? Have we utilized it for the right purposes? So those are the two sides of the, of the questions at least we are asking right now uh, here at the labs. And, and based on that, I'd like to give you some use cases or some incidents where we had to really face the ethical implications of what we are working on. And one of them was, and what we used to call the Flying Greta project. 
Um, you know, Greta, uh, I don't know if you still remember her, is the girl that decided that we didn't need planes or planes were really destructive and we should stop using them and it took a boat to go to the UN. It's a good, you know, morally interesting way of looking at the world. However, we believe that there are ways to utilize technology itself to over time make it more and more ethically viable and environmentally less impactful to utilize the conveniences that we already have. And in, in one aspect, we started utilizing AI for the airport in, here in the UAE and in Dubai to really shave off at least 10% of a distance that the plane needs to take off. And doing that, not only save, save the airlines uh, a substantial amount of money and for the users, the convenience, but the impact on the environment of 10% shorter timeline to take off is huge. It is absolutely huge. So this gave us the uh, excitement that you truly can use technology to still benefit from the, 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 the conveniences that we have, but ensure that with time, we make them more and more uh, uh, effective and efficient. And on the other side, you know, when COVID really happened, uh, we wanted to participate as, as a lab and as engineers to do something really good for society. Now, thankfully we didn't need to use it, but at one point of time, Nobody wanted to sell anybody in any other country components to make a ventilator. People were so scared, they wanted to keep the components for themselves. And, you know, ethically you can say whatever it is, but that was the situation. People wanted to make sure that they are safe. Fair enough. We had to do something at that moment where we decided we're going to use, you know, parts of the ventilator, uh, which are high grade and good, but, you know, air parts that we used in food grade manufacturing. We couldn't get metal grade. And that's, you know, a slight difference in the quality of the air that comes out. We knew it was still safe, but it wasn't of the highest safety. And that, that was an ethical implication and a decision we had to make to say that we're going to build a ventilator if, God forbid, something happened, people can utilize, knowing full on that we didn't build it with the best or the right component. So we had to really weigh the implications of our decisions when we came to design systems. Now, you know, I'm, I've been fortunate enough to really be in a position where uh, I've, I've worked on systems in AI and I've worked on systems in robotics. Um, and I can tell you for a fact that the ethical question is really important. Uh, we have to make sure that we consciously decide on which direction or what telio and what purpose we're giving the technology at the end of its life and how it could be utilized at the end of the day. And I'd like you to do it with a lot of fun because you know, working on these systems, I always come across really funny, funny articles and funny statements that, that, that tells me that people really care about robots for some reason, a lot, that they sometimes even make them seem like they're humans where they say, oh, a robot, uh, committed suicide. Well, really, a robot at the end of the day is only going to do what a human tells it to do. And, and, and with that, I really thank you for your attention and I'm actually looking really forward to uh, receiving your comments and, and questions. Thank you, Khalifa, for um, that interesting topic. Uh, we already have a few questions in the chat, but um, I would like everyone to participate by clicking on the reactions button and raising your hand if you have any further questions. It's easier to keep up with those questions if you ask them yourselves. So we do have our first question from Gulmek. Uh, hello. First of all, um, thank you for the presentation today. That was interesting. And I like how you introduced some um, humor into the end of it. I had a question. Um, do you think that the main reason people may uh, see technology as a drawback is because when our convenience outweighs our own willingness to do something, that's where the problem lies. So if we become too dependent on technology to complete tasks, 
that we could do ourselves. Very interesting. I'd like you, Han, to talk a little more. What do you mean? For example, um, many businesses, many office workers, many students, they require efficiency to be able to save time for other tasks. But then what that leads them to do is that when they save time, they end up doing something non-productive or they end up doing tasks so quickly that they don't think about them or don't do them properly. And if they're ever in a situation where they don't have access to the technology that they need, or if there's a blackout, or if anything happens, they don't have Wi-Fi, they are not able to work properly, even to that level, or sometimes at all, in order to get anything done. So they really become too dependent on technology for productive things, but also for entertainment. So. Okay, I got your point. Thank you. That, that's a very interesting way of looking at, at, at uh, this, this topic. From where I stand and, and what I think at least, if we, we collectively, you know, and, and you guys, when, when you grow up and start working in, in any field you decide to work in, um, if you see that you can improve somebody's life, at least that's the way I think, I am going to do it. Even knowing that if I improved someone's life, he might have more free time and he might not use that free time really well. That is a completely separate topic that society and that person need to decide on how to resolve. You know, uh, a washing machine really changed our societies in ways that I think we don't consciously fathom. They gave our moms, all of them, more time to do more things with, with, with the children, with us. Now, we can never know who's gonna use their time right or wrong, but we could hope that they would do the right thing. We would hope that they would be brought up culturally to understand that that is a responsibility. Our time is a responsibility and how we utilize it and where we spend that time is important. So I'd encourage you, Khan, and everybody else to um, really focus on making it better for people giving ourselves and everyone else the conveniences or our time back. Because ultimately, it seems that this is what we all strive to, to do. And I think we all have to ensure that we think very carefully about what do we do with that extra time? I hope I answered your, your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gunman. Um, we do have questions in the chat. Again, it's hard to keep up with your questions, uh, so it's it's much easier if you if you ask them yourself. But I will read out one of the questions. Um, are there any regulations or ethical standards, guidelines enforced in the UAE for development or use of robots? I think this is a question that is just being asked right now globally, not even in the UAE. Uh, there is room for people to uh, start discussing and debating and drawing these frameworks. Let's call them frameworks. Uh, the itar or a way of, of uh, acting and working and utilizing technology, robots or AI or any other, to be quite frank. Uh, I, you know, some, some European uh, standards are being developed and some committees are being formed. Committees basically is the early stage of a group of people coming together to decide what what the standard is or what the guideline is. So there is room for growth and there is room for improvement and there is room for participation. But we are just starting. So it is not there and and, and people need to uh, not encourage the people to look into it. The best people to work on it usually are people who studied practical philosophy, uh, potentially are, are really interesting to work on this. Engineers themselves could participate in, in doing this. Some lawyers could participate in doing this. So, so there is a lot, uh, a lot of room for improvement there. So the answer is no for now. Um, there's a question from Hassan. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, first of all, for this beautiful presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed the humor at the end. My question is, do you think that in the future someone will take advantage of you know all robotics and the, all this technology to do something bad for the humanity or something? 
that's interesting. I think um, I think that's a human topic more than a technology topic. So I, I can think of uh, a few instances in history where we used a different technology to also do harm, and it's called a fire. We burned each other's villages and houses, and we burned books and libraries. Um, we used horses to do things that we shouldn't have done. So I think perpetually humans are going to utilize what is around them, no matter what it is, for good and for bad. Uh, personally, I am optimistic and historically, if you look at, at the recent you know, timeline that we are in, we are in a way safer uh, environment that, than 100 years ago or 200 years ago or 500 years ago. So I am optimistic that majority of the humans are going to start trying to do the right thing more than doing the wrong thing. Whether it is robotics or anything else, I think it is a, a question of, of ethics that societies and cultures hold and how do they you know, treat each other. So uh, again, I think robots or otherwise, uh, we humans have to pay attention to, to what we do more than the technology. I think Felipe, uh, um, you started by, uh, by saying something in the very beginning uh, that whatever damage is, is, uh, is being done or, or has been done is, uh, is a human thing. And this is something that we need to address as humans. This, when it comes to technology and how we use that technology, it's people like you, I think, uh, that holds that kind of responsibility. Uh, and it's a huge responsibility and there's a lot of room for improvement and all these people with us here today, I think this is the reason why they're all here because they do want to have an input and they do want to have a say in, in how things are moving forward. Um, a question, I, another I, question. I, from, yeah. I, I am betting on it, uh, Marwa, that, that you know, everybody around us here will participate and should participate. And, and I urge you to also think of all the good things that technology does. You know, right now we're moving big tons of, of objects around just to move small boxes that we've ordered from Noon or Amazon or Virgin or wherever. Where in the future, these systems and autonomous systems and drones are going to move less with less energy, faster, better, and, and at the end have a much less significant impact on our environment because of technology, because of robots. So there is a tremendous, tremendous benefit of utilizing it. And, and, and I think it is fair to focus on both, both aspects, good and bad. Yes, Marwa, sorry. Yeah, no, thank you so much for uh, adding to what I was saying. Um, we do have a, a few more questions, but, but there's something that I'd like you to also tackle on is the idea of the robots. We, I know you, you mentioned the examples in the beginning and how media has influenced us, but I think most of us also think of, still do think of robots as uh, machines with heads and hands and legs and, and, and they move around and eventually they think of themselves. How do you define uh, robots in, in this conversation or in this context? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm on the verge of calling my phone a robot if it can do one or, one or two more things, right? A plane is a robot, really. Don't think of a robot of something that has legs only or wheels only. A plane at this moment is a robot. It moves autonomously. It takes off and lands autonomously. It goes for thousands of miles autonomously. And, you know, the, the, uh, the um, pilot is there just in case. So many of the systems that are around us right now are robotic in nature. And robotic in nature is a machine that can take certain tasks, not all, just a few tasks on its own, is called a robot. The metro in Dubai right now is automation and robotic. There is no driver driving it right now. And you, I think within the next 10 years in our life, some aspects of cars are gonna be robotic. That means they will do certain things without us really getting involved, more and more so. Drones are gonna, happen more and more in our lives. So legged things, wheeled things, the Roomba that cleans in our house, 
It's just machines that can do specific tasks without needing our help. Thank you for clarifying that. We have um, a question from Shivam, and, and then I'll go back to, to everyone else. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. I had two questions um, regarding robotics. And the first one was, um, from a historical standpoint, robotics had originated from like a lot of researchers at DARPA, other agencies. So how do you see robotics being used for, let's say, defense, for space, for various aspects? And how do you see the future of robotics as a whole? Um, uh, I've seen some people uh, that, that argue that robots, uh, um, if you search for the term automata, it's a very old term that I would say robots have been used for hundreds of years in, in different forms. Uh, and it's fascinating. That tells you also that we humans have been fascinating in machines that can do certain things on their own for a very, very long time. Uh, although in, in the beginning, uh, instances of robots or automatas, as they call them, uh, we use them for, I would say, entertainment, but, you know, to show the marvel of what mechanics can do. Um, where are they going to go? I think the last three, 30 years have shown a tremendous growth that in the next 10 years, we will cut the same amount of growth in that period of time. So whatever took us 30 years to do, in the next 10 years, we're gonna do that and a little more, in my opinion. Um, you know, to get robots to work really well, to do whatever you want, there are three main things. One is perception. How can you make them see? Number two is how can you make them make decisions? And number three, how can they interact with the world? Right now, I think Roomba was the first I hope you know all Roomba. Roomba is that you know small disc thing that goes in our houses and, and cleans the floors. But Roomba was the first commercially viable robotic company. Can you? And, and this only happened less than five years ago. Now, from that on point onwards until now, huge leaps and bounds have happened in, in robots. So that only leads me to believe that more and more growth is going to happen in the sector. There are countries doing better than others in developing them and adopting them. Yes, and adopting them. So I, I am encouraged in, in the general direction of, of this technology. Okay, cool. Um, Shivam, you had another question or did we answer all uh, your... One more. I just have one more. One more. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, how we have, like, um, as you mentioned, a lot of development, a lot of recent uh, things which have been happening. We also see UE developing the Russian rover, which is going to be sent to the moon. How do you see in terms of space or because that's actually the next frontier. So how do you see that being you robots being used in that? Because you have perseverance, you have a bunch of probes already in interstellar space. So how do you see UE specifically uh, in space in terms of robotics or automation? Thank you. Thank you for that question. So so robots in general can take us to places that we cannot go to. So under the water, up in space, or get suspended in a place where we cannot stay for a very long period of time. The UAE in general and Dubai uh, through Mohammed Barash Space Agency is, has been now working on a Rashid, uh, which Personally, I'm not privy to many of its details, so I cannot really uh, you know, expand this information. However, I can tell you it is really of importance, and this is not going to be the only robot that the UAE is going to work in. Th this type of robots, if you'd like to search more about them, is called extreme robotics, and it's a fascinating topic on its own. So robots that can go into the desert and robots can go under the sea and robots that can go up into space. Right now, the UAE has one example they're working on for the moon, but I highly doubt this is the only one. I think more and more are going to come uh, in the next year or two. Thank you, Khalifa, for answering that. Um, I, I, I will take the next uh, questions and then we'll come back to Hassan and Ammar. Yes. Hello again. Yeah, I have two questions. 
The first is um, social robots. So like Sophia the robot, Han the robot, and also Pepper, which I think is also being, it's commercially available for businesses. And I think you have it in the UAE as well, I think. Um, how soon do you think these can be ingre- integrated with society? And how soon do you think with the education that people will receive about robotics and automatis, um, autonomous technology, how soon do you think they'll be normalized in society and accepted among people as social robots? I, I think that's a very fascinating question. Thank you again, uh, Ron so. For the last 40 years, we've used something called industrial robots. And those are the robots that you put in cages. What's happening in the last 10 years is we're seeing a new category, as you call them, the service robots. And maybe the name is going to change and they're going to be calling them companion robots. That means robots that can you know, be around us and they're relatively safe, doing whatever they're supposed to do, right? Uh, the peppers and the Roombas and the surgery robots. Um, these companion robots are going to grow and they're going to grow exponentially more than what industrial robots have done because they are uh, more accessible at a better price. Uh, I think this is going to happen in the next 10 years. I'm actually betting that this is what's going to grow more than the industrial robots uh, in the coming uh, in the coming decade. Um, when it comes to education, it's there, it's happening. However, it's happening in pockets. So you'd see that you know, a certain city in a certain country put more emphasis on robotics and they have them all the way even in schools and some other countries are the same. I would say it was, it is exactly what has happened with the internet. When the internet first came, not all countries had them. Not all countries had a, a computer in, in our classroom. Uh, but, you know, some people started in the beginning and very quickly it spread for all schools. I don't think it is going to happen with robotics the same, but I think the uh, education component of robotics is going to gradually increase uh, you know, throughout the next decade when people see its implication. Uh, I, I can only answer for the UAE and Dubai, and I can tell you that you will see more and more curriculums and, and things coming uh, in our schools for robotics in the next five years for sure, because it's uh, an area of focus for at least this country and the city. Thank you. I had uh, one more question, which was um, with people, patients who have disabilities or have diseases such as Parkinson's, where it affects their mobility, do you think these social robots would be able to help them? And uh, do you also think that with education, with actually providing basic education to people who do not have access to human teachers because maybe there isn't enough funding for salaries or any other issues, do you think robots could potentially one day have serve a role in education by directly educating people? I hope so. I, I hope I hope I see you, Han, doing something about it, to be quite frank, because until now, I haven't seen anyone think of that uh, angle. And I think it is uh, worthwhile. Um, that is the second question of yours. What was the first part, if that's okay? If you can repeat it. Um, about how social robots can help people, yes. uh, the patients yes. with disabilities. Yeah. Or- I think... Uh, many institutions around the world are working tirelessly on creating assistive robots, especially in the East. Uh, So even as simple as moving the wheelchair around, some people really cannot even have the ability to move their wheelchairs. Um, Exoskeletons to help people with their jitters, it is going to come. It is not only going to be robotics that are gonna solve some of the Um, ailments that you've mentioned, but I think it's an amalgamation of many, many technologies coming together. Uh, I think for mobility, for the physical world to help alleviate some of the pressures, yes, robots, exoskeletons are coming on their way to to help humanity with that. Thank you. Um, Do you have an email address where I can contact you to ask any further questions or for any guidance? I'm going, to put the, I'm going to put the lab's email in everyone's chat right now. So please feel free later on if you want to reach out or have any more questions to ask. 
Thank you. Thank you, Gulmak. Um, Hassan, sorry, we kept you waiting. Uh, it's okay. Uh, my question was, uh, will there be any, you know, any rules for uh, robotics in the future? Like if someone wants to make their own robot, when I say robot, I mean, you know, like the Iron Man type, you know, with hands and uh, legs. So I will ask you to explain your question. But so you're calling, you're talking about humanoid robots. So that's a category of robots. So what do you want to know more, yeah. Hassan, about that? So will they uh, will there be any you know uh, rules about them like uh, yeah, any rules and regulation for them because some of them might be dangerous and some of them might you know take some you know license but I don't know like I'm, I want to ask about the rules of making one. I think, I think um, at this stage we are all trying to think about the general rules about robots generally right. Whether they are humanoid or extreme robots or connected robots, the rules are going to be the rules, at least in my mind, they're all going to be the same. Because you can do harm with somebody, something that has legs or something that has wheels or something that has a tentacle or something that has a hand and fingers. It's nearly all the same. I think when we develop the rules for systems in general, we should be developing them you know, um, for general purposes, not specifically for a humanoid as an example. And I would, I would tell you all and urge you, we are very, very far away from that time where they potentially could do a lot of damage. And that's why I'm telling you that these ethical questions are actually important now because we're building technology now that these new technologies are going to be built upon. So I wouldn't urge you to wait until then. I would, I would, ask you to think about the systems that you want to design and, and, and work on right now. And really to answer you back, yes, the world is starting to think about the ethical implications and the moral framework that robotic systems in general need to have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hassan. Um, it will be interesting to, to live in a time uh, to see that uh, and to see how Iron Man comes to life. Uh, Ammar, we have a question from you. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I have a question about uh, jobs opportunities today. We all know that uh, AI and robotics will eliminate many of jobs that uh, exist today, such as uh, the drivers, as you mentioned. The question is, do you think that AI and robotics will in return create more job opportunities than it has eliminated or not, do you think? I have no doubt. I want you all to really understand this basic fact. This is really important. For the last 50 years, we can all agree that we have had way more technology in our life than we ever thought could possibly happen. I don't think anybody could have imagined 50 years ago everything that we have today. And we can all agree that now we hire way more people than we hired 50 years ago. We have seen this over and over and over again. When technology comes, it displaces a task. It does not displace a job. A job has multiple tasks. If, you all, if we all sit down and think about all the tasks that I do in, 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 in at least my daily life, some of them might be done by a robot, not all of them. So it's not the job that gets replaced. It's some tasks. And in reality, what we're trying to do here is free more and more of our time, and that's our request as humans, back by taking that tasks away and giving them to machines for machines to do. So really, to sum the answer up, never be afraid of having less jobs because machines are there, because History has shown us that it is not the case, that we know how to create better jobs for ourselves when we use machines to help us create more productivity in our economy. Thank you. Did, did that answer your question? Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, so thank much. you. I mean, uh, I love that Felipe said that it will replace tasks because I think most of the tasks that are being replaced are the ones that we don't want to do. 
and uh, to have more time to focus on the things that we actually want to do. Uh, we have another question from Basha. Uh, hi, thank you for the uh, presentation first. I need to ask if the uh, Corona or COVID-19 um, um, leads to um, acceptance of idea of uh, using robots in the field of work. For example, many hospitals uh, start using robots uh, due to Corona. Uh, what's your opinion? And, uh, the crisis or the disease make people accepting more the idea of robots in the field work? I, Russia, if you can really uh, repeat the question because some, somehow the line was not clear. Okay, do you hear me now? Okay. You're a little bit uh, lagging. Is your connection good? Ask, ask it again. Let me see if I can pick, pick up the question. Oh. I think we lost her. She was asking uh, the relationship between uh, COVID. Rasha, are you with us? Okay, I, I don't know if I understood her question correctly, but I think the relationship between uh, COVID and people accepting the use of uh, robots in hospitals, maybe, like the culture of, of robotics think... and. Yeah, I think I think COVID really ex expedited uh, our acceptance of technology for stuff, including robots. I agree. I agree. It showed it showed that actually there is room for improvement and there is room for us to utilize them. Where before we really just accepted the status quo, where right now we're more accepting of of, of utilizing different, doing different things. Just it it allowed change to happen and for us to accept change, whether in robots or not. But yes, I agree. And, and robots have proliferated in the healthcare uh, sector because of COVID, fortunately or unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, Khalifa. Um, one question from Sultan. I, I want to say about uh, the, like, it's, it's maybe the, I do not know how, like the robot, how, how would the robot will do not be, Maybe one robot is good and maybe one is not good, or what? So I think, uh, Sultan, right? Yeah. You are going to decide if a robot is good or not. How we use it and how you build it. If you ever build a robot, you, Sultan, are going to be responsible to decide if it's good or bad. And when you come and buy it and use it, you will also be deciding that too. So no way, there is no robot that is good or bad. It is how we use them that determines if they are good or bad. Like, uh, like uh, someone have, has not uh, know to use robot and he's using it and he say it is not good. It, seem, it seems from his, uh, from his, his problem, not the robot bro problem. And, and you, Sultan, are now wiser to understand that what he is saying is not correct. The system is the system. It's how we use them. We humans decide if they are good or bad. I hope I answered. Sultan, uh, Sultan yeah. people uh, like you, um, impress us because I think our generation, when we were your age, there is no way that me or Khalifa were talking the way that you are talking. So we are, we're smiling because we're impressed by how how mature you are. Um, Khalifa, there's a question about uh, Dubai Future Labs. Uh, what type of projects are you pursuing? And if you can share a success story for motivation? Okay, I'm going to give you a sneak peek on, on one that has not been announced, but I think will be announced very soon. Um, you know, many people think that drones should be in our societies. They should do certain things, right? Uh, but to make that happen, you need to make sure that the drones you fly are safe. So there's a standard of 
What do I need to have in that drone for it to be able to function and be safe for the people around it? Uh, what's the legal implications of using it or not using it in certain areas? Uh, what can it do and what time uh, frame can it be done? All these systematic questions of what do we need to put down as rules and as technology, software-wise or hardware-wise, to allow people to fly drones comfortably. So you don't need to take permission, you just fly it, and in a split second you either get a permission to go and do it or not do it. For very simple things like an ambulance needed some sort of medicine uh, from a close by hospital, and the only way you can do it is with a drone because of the track. So, how can we allow that to happen? You've ordered certain things and you wanted some small packet that comes to come to you from the supermarket. Um, how can a drone bring that to you instead of really moving big cars just to give you, you know, something that is one two kgs? How can we do it more effectively? Um, if you are up out in the sea and you want something to come to you in the sea, drones are really effective in doing that. How would you do it? If you're flying something from a city to a city, how would you do it? All these questions are questions we've been asking for months and we're very excited that very soon we're going to be um, making available a place for people to test their technologies out and to make sure that we as societies can benefit of these technologies like drones and make sure that we do it safely. So this is something I'm personally extremely excited about. I'm excited about four more other things, but unfortunately I cannot talk about them at this moment of time. But uh, there is so much to be done, really. So much to be done, so much benefit that could be gained out of integrating technology, utilizing it, thinking about how to deploy it, for the benefit of companies and ultimately really societies. And the beauty of today's world, they can always follow you on your social media platforms to learn more about these announcements that will happen soon, inshallah. Uh, I think we have Russia back with us. Russia? Uh, sorry, I lost connection. Do you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, my question is the related. Do you think that COVID-19 affects the idea of using a robot in the field work? Yani we see many hospitals start using a robot. Uh, how, um, in the future, how much the idea of diseases and uh, crisis will, uh, will emphasize the, the importance of using robots in the field work? I think uh, that's a very good observation, which is, which, is, which is true. I think COVID made sure that we, as citizens, accept change. It forced us to accept change. And because it forced us to accept change, we started accepting robots and remote working and Zoom and so many other things, right? Uh, so your observation is correct. We were forced to accept change. And because of that change, we started utilizing technology to make it easier, easier better, uh, and, and hopefully uh, safer for, for, for us. And robots are definitely proliferating in the healthcare uh, because of COVID. I would say encouraged by COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Khalifa, and thank you, Rasha. Uh, we can take the last question from Ali, and then I'll give you the last words. I know we took a lot of your time, uh, and you're a busy man. So thank you, Khalifa, once again. Ali, you can ask your question. Thank you, Marwa. Um, I'd like to ask uh, you that um, how can people contribute to the um, to the great work that you and your team are doing? I mean, is there any specific um, field or anything that you'd like people to, you know, more people to work on? Or any specific um, requirement that the UAE has so in robotics? Would... Perfect. Thank you, Ali. So I would say that uh, pay attention in the next uh, month. You, you will see uh, enough information coming out to make it clear uh, which type of robots are more acceptable or are going to be more prevalent in the UAE at least. Um, and with that, you'll find enough literature to really do your own research and see what is out there. But since, since, since I have you, I can, at a high level, just tell you that interdisciplinary, if you're going to university, interdisciplinary um, uh, 
uh, degrees are extremely interesting for roboticists. If 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 robotics is what is a topic that you want to get into, um, choose to be one of two: either to be a good generalist as an engineer, so you can program manage or project manage multiple engineers, or be really really good at one or two things in in your technical field. So, as an example, sometimes we you know get perception engineers. He only knows how to program sensors and code them and make sure that they don't use a lot of battery and a lot of, but you really need to be special to, to take a specialization and stick to it. So I think you can participate in, in robotics um, and, and you'll be surprised in, in many angles because robotics is fascinating. It, and it, it is meaningful to an architect. It is meaningful to a pe- person who's in an airport. It's, it's meaningful to a person who's on the port. It is meaningful to people who are in shipping. It is meaningful for people to manuf- who manufacture. So you can come to robotics in many, many different ways, uh, not, not in one specific way. Um, again, just to summarize, if you go interdisciplinary, you're looking at being a project manager in general, and that's, that's a good thing and is needed. If you're going specialize, to specialize, make sure that you really choose your professors really well, choose your universities really well, because both are viable and both are needed, not only in the UAE, but everywhere around the world. And there is a shortage around the world in really good roboticists. So there, 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 is, uh, there is always room there. Internships, let me answer that. Yes, we do. We do a lot. We actually took 21 interns until now, if not a little more. Uh, only this year, and we constantly have interns. Actually, be ready next week. We're gonna uh, be opening up for internship again uh, since the last batch has just finished. So uh, we always, always accept and encourage internships. But please be ready. You're gonna work, and we're gonna give you packages like you're one of us. You're going to work as if you're working on a real project. So tell them how to apply for the internship. Uh, so next before uh, making them work. So make sure, make sure that you pay attention. It is going to be on the Dubai Future Foundation website. We're going to make sure that the announcement gets there. Uh, pay attention next week. Uh, and um, if you want to ensure that we talk to you specifically, uh, you have our email right now, labs at dubaifuturefoundation.gov.ae. Uh, just send me, a, drop me a line, and I'm going to make sure that the applications come to you personally once they are open next week. Thank you, Khalifa. Um, we have taken an hour of your time, but honestly speaking, we did not feel it at all. It was uh, entertaining and insightful. We learned a lot from you. And I hope that everyone here stays connected with you and stays connected with us. Um, we'd love to have you back again in, in other programs. Um, so I will not take a lot of your time. Thank you so much. I would just type in the social media platforms in case you want to tag us or connect with us. Um, I would also type in your uh, email address and then we can uh, all be. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending and I hope that was useful. And I hope you you reach where you want to reach in life later on. And if you're a roboticist, please reach out to us. Even if you want to try it and you're not sure, please again reach out to us. We'll be more than happy.